Hi everybody, my name is Lori Mishley and I'm a clinician and a researcher in Seattle, Washington and we're running several clinical trials that are open to people not just living in the Pacific Northwest vicinity but globally. So what I want to do is just talk to you about the studies that we're running and how you can get involved and participate if you are interested in doing so. This is my disclosure side. You can see that I'm involved in a lot of different projects. Um, perhaps the only one that's really relevant to today's talk is my relationship with the company Park9. Um, I'm the one who started the company that is the dog detection of par canine detection of Parkinson's. We're trying to find the scent of Parkinson's disease um, using dogs and dirty earwax samples. Um, I currently do research at Bastyr University and University of Washington. I have research funding from Michael J. Fox Foundation and community donors. I see patients at Bastyr University's summer school and Seattle Integrative Medicine is where my main research or my main clinic practice takes place and I am currently teaching the online course Parkinson's School for Patients and Providers. Um, my contact information will be on the final slide if anybody wants to get in touch with me after this. Thanks. Before I start talking about the clinical studies that we are recruiting for, I'd like to introduce myself, tell you a little bit about how I got involved in research, and make you aware of a little bit of the nitty gritty about clinical trials and research participation. So uh, about my uh, entry into clinical research. So I had been practicing in clinical practice for about 10 years when I got an award from the NIH to leave practice and go into research. Basically, the idea was um, it has been really, really difficult for conventional researchers to study complementary and alternative medicines. Things like who eats broccoli and who doesn't, who meditates and who doesn't. Those types of interventions, like eating broccoli and meditation, don't lend themselves very well to a double-blind placebo-controlled trial. We don't have placebo broccoli, and we don't have placebo meditation. So a lot of the um, level one evidence, double-blind, randomized, controlled clinical trials are really difficult, if not impossible, to do on a lot of things related to lifestyle modification. So my task was to find better ways for researchers to study complementary and alternative medicine. It was a government grant and they gave me five years of funding and told me to go and figure out better ways to solve the Parkinson's conundrum. Are there things that people with Parkinson's can do specifically related to nutritional interventions that might slow, stop, reverse, or otherwise improve people's quality of life with Parkinson's disease? So I got that job in 2010. It lasted until 2015. During that time, I got, earned a master's in public health and epidemiology and a PhD in nutritional sciences from University of Washington School of Public Health. And ever since then, I have been conducting clinical trials and research studies on people with Parkinson's. Um, most of my research, my day job, has really been related to the study of intranasal glutathione and Parkinson's disease. And those studies can be found on PubMed and online. There's a lot of information about them. Um, we are not currently recruiting for any trials related to intranasal glutathione, but it's something I'm still very much involved in, invested in, and see a future for. Um, but right now, there are not any clinical trials moving forward related to intranasal glutathione and Parkinson's disease. Research is very much a team sport. Uh, all the way down to the original funders, the people who donate money to the studies, the investors who support, um, who invest in pharmaceutical companies and startups to bring new drugs to market, to the researchers, the oversight bodies, all the way to the patients with Parkinson's disease who participate in the trials. None of this could happen without all of the members on that team. And so that's one thing I want to stress going into this is, this is not, I don't feel like research is something that we do to you or on you. Research is something that we all do together. And the act, the process of providing informed consent really is about getting the person with Parkinson's, the study participant, um, up to speed and involved as a member of the team. Before you participate in a clinical trial, we want you to understand exactly why that trial is taking place, what we hope to learn, what are the risks, what are the benefits, so that you can make an informed decision about whether you want to participate. 
So, so for people who are looking to find out which studies are going on or what might be happening in their area, the best place to go is clinicaltrials.gov. Any study that is recruiting study uh, patients with Parkinson's disease will certainly have their study listed on clinicaltrials.gov. The uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation has an excellent website called the Trial Finder. Fox Trial Finder is an excellent resource for people with Parkinson's disease where they can give a couple details about themselves and the Trial Finder will match them up with studies for which they may be eligible. Um, here in Washington State, we have a Parkinson's disease registry. I encourage all of you to enroll in that. You, By enrolling, you are not signing up to participate in any study whatsoever. Um, all you are doing is saying that if there is a study that comes along for which you might be eligible, you would like to be told about that study. You'd like to receive a flyer in the mail or something that lets you know that this study is happening. So before I get into the details of the studies, I just want to say a couple things about my personal philosophy on research and my loyalties to the type of research that I want to do. With very few exceptions, um, the research that I am trying my best to engage in and participate in is pragmatic. When the study is done, patients and providers will have some immediately useful information. This isn't research that tells us mechanism of action or how something happens or why something happens. Um, what I'm looking to do is participate in research where when the study is over, patients and providers now know what they should do to better improve their life. So I'm not so interested in road models, lab research. That stuff needs to happen. I'm supportive of it. I'm supportive of that kind of research happening. It's just not the type of research I do. I do what are called pragmatic clinical trials where when the study is over, we have some answers that patients can immediately use. The second thing that I'm really um, committed to are patient reported outcomes. In my mind, the most important goal here is that the quality of life of patients with Parkinson's improves. I don't want to do research that measures uh, only tremor intensity or only pain. Um, um, I don't want to participate in research that tells us whether or not you might be able to move a little faster um, if it doesn't also ask you if you perceive improvement. I don't care what the measure says, the biomarker says, what I really care about is that patients with Parkinson's experience benefit. For symptomatic things, that's easy to do. Um, that's a lot harder when we start looking for disease-modifying therapies. People with Parkinson's can't feel their disease progressing or reversing very well. And so what I've been doing is working on some techniques that allow patients to have a voice. Um, we've developed a outcome measure called the Patient Reported Outcomes in Parkinson's Disease. PROPD is a patient-centered measure of Parkinson's disease severity. And what it does is it gives patients a voice. As the study goes on, we will still be looking at rigidity. We will still be looking at tremor. We will still be looking at posture and um, balance and things like that. But we also ask the patient how they feel how their fatigue is, how their sleep is, how their pain is, how their, how their mood is, um, things like anxiety and constipation and things that sometimes get left out of some of the conventional um, objective markers. Objective markers or measures are things that the researcher or physician can observe. Subjective measures are the things that the patient experiences. And so um, when I engage in research studies, I think it's really, really, really essential that with every study that we do, there is something that asks the patient about their own quality of life and their perception of symptoms. Who cares if the machine says you're better if you don't feel better? Um, and, and alternatively, if you say that you feel great, but the machine doesn't pick up the, an improvement, I'm still supportive of that intervention. The only thing, the gold standard in my mind, is that the patient perceives improvement. All right, so the first study that I want to tell you about is a study that we are used doing at the University of Washington designed to look at mitochondrial function in Parkinson's disease. So, um, so in Parkinson's disease, we have known for several decades that the mitochondria inside of the cell, the powerhouse, the place where the energy is produced, is not quite as functional as it should be in people with Parkinson's. And we've known this for decades, but it's been really hard to do research on mitochondria in Parkinson's. So one of the recent advances in the field of metabolic medicine and 
research is that we no longer need to do a biopsy or take a sample of your tissue to figure out what is happening metabolically inside of you. Using MRI machines, magnetic fields and sound waves can actually create a picture of what is happening to you inside of your cells in terms of human metabolism. We can measure the concentration of glutathione or vitamin C or ATP in this case, um, the body's fuel and tell you whether you are making the same amount as healthy normal people your age, less than or more than. And so, and so we now have decades of research suggesting that people with Parkinson's have impaired mitochondrial function, but we don't have a lot of experience being able to describe where this is occurring in the body, how extensively it's occurring in the body, if there are compensation mechanisms happening, maybe people with Parkinson's muscles are actually working harder and burning out faster, maybe they're having a hard pr time producing any uh, fuel at all. And so what we want to do is measure the ATP production of a person's arm and leg, uh, in the muscles of the arm and the leg, to find out if people with Parkinson's make the same amount of ATP less or more than healthy controls of the same age. So for the MRI study at University of Washington, that study is currently recruiting. We've already run our first participant through. It was really easy and fun and smooth and we got the data that we were looking for. And so now we have, um, we're looking for 29 more people who would like to participate. Uh, so those of you who are interested in participating in this study, I will put my email address up here and you can email me at the University of Washington email address and uh, we will follow up with you as soon as the study starts enrolling again. We will call you and see if this is a study for which you may be eligible. All right. CAM Care in PD stands for Complementary and Alternative Medicine in Parkinson's Disease. This is my labor of love. This is my hobby. This is something that I started about eight or nine years ago when I was starting to study epidemiology at the University of Washington. And it started out with me trying to ask some very simple questions. Um, could we find the people with Parkinson's who are doing unusually well and the people who are doing unusually poorly, progressing slow or progressing fast, could we find them? Could we describe them? And could we describe what they, the fast progressors were doing differently than the slow progressors? Because there wasn't an outcome measure that existed that could have, would have met the needs of this internet-based study, we built a new outcome measure. It's called the PROPD. Any one of you can go to the website right now, get your score, see how you compare to other people diagnosed at the same time that you were. So what we've been doing is for the last seven years now, the study has been live. For seven years, we have enrolled to over 2,200 people with Parkinsonism. 1,600 of those people have idiopathic Parkinson's disease. And every six months, we send a survey to all of these individuals who have enrolled. Um, and we send you a survey, and we ask, who are you, how are you, and what are you doing? That's it. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half every six months. There's power in numbers. You might start eating